Well, thanks for coming to another watercolour demonstration. Let me use your 15 by 11 watercolour paper up here, made, made by uh, Fabriano. I buy it in um, sheets of 100. Basically, just because it's cheap, it works out about. It's about 30. 32 pound for um, 100 sheets, so it's quite reasonable, really. It's not as thick as a, as, as a lot of papers, but it, it, it gets the job done. This is uh, just raw sienna and alizarin crimson, just mixing it together. And I'm just going to clean the brush and go into some ultramarine with a Bit of paint grey. Just work that up there somewhere. A bit more. Reload the brush. And then it's a bit more alizarin crimson paint grey. Clouds, clouds up in the sky. And a few little ones down there. Lots of small ones going up into the distance. Just brushing a bit from there. And it just makes a nice little, nice little background to work with. I'll just give that a quick dry. Dry, just enough to stop the paint from coming down the paper. And then I'm just refixing it and we're good to go again. So distant hill, so I haven't cleaned the brush, I've still got all those colours on the brush, but sort of leaning towards blue because blue pushes things right back into the distance and doing with quite a low horizon line here. These are the far, far mountains, you can just about see. No detail at this sort of stage. And then as they come a bit closer, a bit more colour in them. A bit of green, a bit of raw sienna. A bit more pointy, that one, I think. And then a bit more, a bit more raw sienna, a bit more colour as they get even closer. A bit of blue, a bit of yellow. Like of water down there, so I'm just going to pull down a bit of reflection. And then it sort of works its way over there, a bit more green. Not much detail at this sort of distance, this is right, right way back. Something like that. I'm just going to get a little see now. Yeah, just clean that little brush just a little bit. A little more sienna, a bit of lemon yellow, a bit of blue. See so it really changes the green when you hit the blue. So this is a bit of water over this side and then I'm just, just coming down there with some land. There's only a little bit of water on this right hand side. And it's sort of just around something like something like that. Dipping into all my greens, which are basically you've got the 
raw sienna, lemon yellow, all from a range. Just trying to vary. There's also a bit of Payne's grey there if you want to really, really darken it. Right, now, the bush has gone a little bit, a little bit dark. So I've just cleaned it, wiped the excess off on the tissue, and I'm going back into, back to the lights. See how it's gone nice and light again, contrasting nicely against those darker greens. So I'm just constantly going into the palette, varying the colour, trying to keep it interesting. I'm going to give it a bit of, bit of burnt umber, I haven't used that yet. Burnt umber. Sienna, back into that lemon yellow, and this hill. Well, it's still quite far away. This is, so I don't. I really don't want any detail. Just keeping it. Just keeping it like that. Not much. Can't see much at this distance. about to see like hedges dividing the fields. Just trying to keep it sore. Just the odd hedge here and there, just dividing the fields up. That'll do. And if it sort of slopes down from this left hand side, I'm just going to pull this paper tight, it's just come away slightly from the board, just slightly stretched a little bit. So I'll probably fix it there with these clips. You can stretch the paper before you start painting if you want, I just prefer to do it as I go along. And then just watch out for things like this where you've got the, the water just seeps up. It's not a problem as it is then, I'll, actually I'll be painting over that anyway, so I'm not going to worry too much about that. It's a bit of blue, ultramarine, burnt umber, and then we're sort of going down like this. So but it's got a bit dark, so I want to get back to lighter colours, so I just need to clean it. I took the excess up on the tile, see that way I've got no water swishing about on the palette. I know a lot of beginnings I've, I did myself, terrible trouble trying to control the water on the hype. It really almost puts you off using the hype before you've really got, got to grips with it. It's trying to control that ratio of, of water to paint in the mix. Like I say, I've never got water swishing around. I can hold this paint upside down because there's no water coming out. Most of the water I need is in the actual hairs. And then I can just go around, just tapping the, tapping the colours. And I know it's not going to be too diluted. So all the all the paint just looks washed out on the paper. Right now, there's a little path coming up there, so I might just go with a. Cleaning that brush again and just taking the excess off on the towel. Now I'm just going to go just a bit of light red and a bit of blue, like ultramarine. And then we'll sort of go around there like that. And then it comes around there like that. It's a very simple little path. Clean the brush, take the excess water off on the tea towel. I mean, back into these, back into this little greeny colour. Just going to push this up. Just get the grass in first. Then there's a little, just a yard hedge here and there. I'd like to try and do. Once 
of this is in. So I'm just constantly there, Nick, trying to. The last, the last thing you want is just a blocks of blocks of similar colour. That you just just makes it a bit boring to look at. So even though I haven't really done a fat lot there, so I've varied the colour. It helps keep it really stick. Now. This path is just covered by the odd hedge here and there, so just give it a bit of light red, a bit of burnt umber, and then really darken it with this ultramarine. There we go. In fact, I might just give that a quick dry first because the pack will go on better. This is nice and dark on the brush. Just using the corner of the brush just to make this make this hedgerow. The red, brown, blue. That's enough. Just path just follows that hedgerow around. There's a on the other side. I might just, just add that continuing right off the page right there. And there we are. Just lock edges that follow the path around. You can even Knock a little fence in there. I'm just going to scrape the fence out with the card. Then we just need like a little figure. Looks as if there's something missing. Just a little figure there. I'm just walking off. So I'm just going to switch to the rigger. It's number three rigger brush. And then just take a little bit of a little bit of red. Now I'm just going to start with the sort of neck down. She's got like the his coat. Get a little bit of blue on there. And just pop his legs in. And just pop a head on as well. Just looks like a little. Just where he's just come from, something like that. It's a little figure. It just gives a bit of life to the thing. And then last. Finally, just pop your name in the corner. Just pop my name just over on this side. I'm going to call that one finished. So, let's see what it looks like with the mains on. So here we are with the mains on. If we go in and have a start with the sky. Sky was a uh, various mixes here. We got raw sienna and lizard, which creates this sort of pink, pink sort of colour. And you, you can imagine the sort of the blue is, is the the sky, and then the rest of it is just various different colours of clouds, really. Darker ones here, mixes of um, ultramarine and, and Payne's grey. Bit of a lizard thrown in as well. See down in here on the horizon, the most distant land I've put in using the same colours as the clouds. And just introduced a bit more raw sienna and, and lemon yellow, just for the uh, where the landscape starts to come closer towards us. Got a narrow band of water in this picture, and I'll just pull down a few reflections there. So if you can imagine, we're sort of on a hill here, sort of looking down into the into the, the landscape below us. 
So I've just tried to vary different colours, and then you can just about make out, just sort of try to make out the sort of hedgerows dividing the fields up. You can just about make them, make out what they are. Not much detail at this distance, just important things just to vary the colour to keep it interesting. And here we've got our little path winding its way around to our little figure making his way off into the distance. Scratching out there just to put a little fence in using the card. Now deliberately I've just done it over a dark background to make the uh, make it stand out better. Well thanks for watching, I hope you like that. Don't forget to keep practicing and uh, helping me out by subscribing and commenting and liking the videos, share, share as many videos as you can. So until we meet again, thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon.